In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. The Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Isaiah. But before we get into the actual scripture, I wanted to give kind of a, a background on this to help you understand some of the terminology I'm going to use. You see, Israel was a covenant nation. And to understand what that means, you have to really study and go all the way back to Israel at its inception. If you look at Exodus 19, and this is repeated over and over again in the Torah, it's repeated over and over again in the writings of the, ma the major and minor prophets. David alludes to it several times. Israel is a nation that had a covenant with God. And that covenant came about in Exodus 19 when Moses and God were communicating with each other on Sinai. And before he gave Moses the law, he said, if you will follow my commands and if you will follow my laws, I will be your God, you will be my people. If you keep my laws, I will keep you. And that includes a range of things, including blessings from a material standpoint, blessings from a spiritual standpoint, being a peculiar people that is set aside from the rest of the world that gets special treatment from God as a result of that. And that was all done, of course, we know with hindsight, to create the environment that was ready for the coming Christ. But even without all that knowledge, Israel understood that they had a covenant with God and that they needed to keep that covenant. Because here's the thing. If you look throughout the biblical narrative from beginning to end, there is something that is consistent about God all the way through. And that is, he never breaks a covenant. However, if you break the covenant, he is also not going to keep his end of the bargain. To my knowledge, and, and maybe somebody that is more biblically astute than I am can point this out, but I don't think they can. Is there ever an instance in the Bible where God makes a covenant with someone, and then they break that covenant, and God's just like, ah, I'm going to do whatever I promised for him anyway? No. Every single time, there is retribution that comes from a breach of God's covenant. And Israel was certainly no different. And that's really where our story starts here today. So let's look at the book of Isaiah 24, verses 3 through 6. The earth will be completely laid waste and completely despoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers, the world fades and withers. The exalted of the people of the earth shall fade away. The earth is also polluted by its inhabitants, for they transgressed laws, violated statutes, broke the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and those who live in it are held guilty. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. Now, that's pretty strong language to the point that I don't know that you can get a lot more extreme than the earth is going to be laid waste and there are going to be very few people left. And what's the context of what Isaiah is talking about? He's saying, Israel, this is you, and you brought this on yourself because you broke God's covenant. That's what he's saying. He's saying, because you you refuse to keep God's covenant, to keep your end of the bargain with God, your land is going to be laid waste, everything is going to be desolate, and what he's describing there, poverty, war, famine, earth, uh, that part where he's talking about how the maid is going to be like the, the master and the servants are all going to be the same, what he's talking about is extreme poverty there. Because you'll notice that when people are prospering, there are certain people that are doing better than others, that you have a society that's somewhat stable. When you have extreme poverty, everybody's poor. Everybody's in the same state of misery. There's nobody to help you out because there's nobody that's doing better than you to help you out. You're all just kind of living at the same base level, which is kind of like socialism, but we won't get off into that right now. That's not really the point of this. But 
when they broke the covenant, the, the overall point of that, it says that the people even polluted the earth with sin. And because they polluted it, their covenant, they became the pollution themselves, and the earth was no longer going to bear it. When we make decisions that defy God's natural order, we are actively working in rebellion to God, and we cannot be surprised when we fall victim to the consequences of our own decisions. When we make those decisions, when we make a conscious decision to do evil, evil will come back to get us. And that's exactly what happened with Israel. They had broken their covenant with God. And the reason that this is important to us today is A, because on an individual level, all of us that have been buried with Christ in his, in his blood, that have been with him, that have been made a new creature through baptism, all of us that have gone through that process have made a covenant with God. So on an individual level, and this is the reason that we're referred to as a, a royal priesthood, a nation of priests, as the church. We have made an individual covenant with God. And if we break that covenant, we are not going to reap the benefits that he promises those who are part of his kingdom. But on the broader sense, a lot of people don't realize that America is also a covenant nation. Let's look at Washington's first inaugural address, where he says, Since we ought to be no less persuaded that the pompous smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right, which heaven itself has ordained, and since the preservation of the sacred fire of liberty, the destiny of the Republican model of government, are justly considered as deeply, perhaps as finally staked, on the experiment entrusted into the hands of the American people. Now, what is Washington doing there? And keep in mind, this is directly after the prayer that he started his address with, where he asked for God's protection. So right after Washington prays for God's protection and his blessing, he says, And you remember, America, that a nation has an obligation to be thankful to God, and to realize that they cannot rise or fall without his blessing. That they cannot be a good nation that is entrusted with the sacred fire of liberty if they are not following his precepts and paying homage to him. You see, Washington was making a covenant that day. He was making a covenant with the Almighty. And he says that it's up to the American people to keep it. It is up to the American people to see if this freedom thing of, of not having a king, not having some kind of mob rule over you, that man living by himself and living, worshiping his God the way that he sees fit and not having the government mandate that to you, that American experiment, as he calls it, it's up to us to preserve it. It's up to us to see that through. And if we don't keep our end of the covenant, we will lose it. I realize that Washington's not Moses, and I realize it's not nearly as official because it's not in the Bible. But I believe that covenant still stands today. That that agreement is still here because it's the natural order of things. That if we fall into debauchery and disarray, just like Israel did, then we will lose God's favor, just as Israel did. And so it's instrumental that we keep the promise that Washington made with God. Because if we don't, we will visit his wrath upon us. And as proof of this, have you ever noticed that our darkest hours were always at times where we weren't obeying God? Think about this. Every dark hour we've had in American history always happened as a result of a time where we weren't worshiping God the way we were supposed to or we were doing something in contradiction to his will. Perfect example. When the country founded, we were doing very well. And part of the reason was we were working towards ending slavery. And then about 30 years after that, we started working in the opposite direction. 
And the Civil War, which is arguably one of the darkest times in our history, was a result of refusing to let go of slavery. Then you fast forward, one of the darkest hours that we had was in World War I, which happens directly after we tried to embrace socialism. We did something pretty similar in the lead up to World War II, and the exact same thing happened. We embraced nationalism, and that came back to bite us. You see, all the periods of great upheaval in America have come directly as a result of us refusing to do what God asked us to do. And I don't think that that's a coincidence. So let's always, always remember the covenant that George Washington made with God. And here's the, the main thing that you should take away from this. This isn't something that can be won with elections or legislation. doesn't matter how many laws we pass, doesn't matter how many Supreme Court justices we get appointed or how many elections or elections that we win for president or Senate or at the local level. doesn't matter. None of that is going to be something that turns us back to God. Now, maybe turning back to God will result in some of those things. But ultimately, we can't confuse the cause and effect. If we want to have a good, prosperous nation, the only way we can do that is to honor God and to keep his commands. Stay the course, friends. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.